9060 XT is here and it's affordable. FSR is getting more and AMD is doing what we hoped they would do for a very long time and is actually gonna take on NVIDIA in a very good way. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. This Thursday, May 22nd, 2025. And yesterday was the AMD keynote here at Computex where they discussed a whole variety of things that we'll be going over in this episode. We're gonna start off with the main thing that a lot of people are talking about, but I don't think it was the most important. And that is the RX 9060 XT launch. These things are coming in at an affordable price point compared to its competitor, which is the 5060 Ti. $299 for the 8 gig version, $349 for the 16 gig version, all launching on the Nintendo Switch 2 day. AMD in their own chart saying that it has 15% better performance per dollar than the 5060 Ti, and that's with them comparing the 9060 XT 16 gig versus the 5060 Ti 8 gig because those are closer in price, but then also them showing that it's 6% better than the 5060 CTI at 1440p ultra at 180 watts. So there's a lot of qualifiers there. The cheapest 5060 Ti is $30 more expensive than the most expensive 9060 XT, at least when it comes to MSRP. So if we look at these prices, this is actually the best case scenario in terms of dollar per value that AMD could give us with these cards because the 9060 XT 8 gigabyte variant is exactly half of a 9070 XT. So it's half the amount of cores, it's half the amount of RAM, it's half the amount of power, it's half the amount of memory bandwidth, it's it's exactly just a half 9070 XT and it comes in at exactly half of the price point at 299. Now, the question obviously becomes, uh, wait for third party reviews, June 5th is when that's gonna be happening, so just a couple weeks in order to get all of that, but, is this potentially, you know, just bringing in some skepticism here, is this potentially AMD realizing that price points at the market aren't actually gonna reflect these, and so if they just say it has a good MSRP, they get positive promotion for that, while not having to actually deliver on it because they're not bringing out a reference edition where they can control the price at 299 for any certain manner of these cards. I mean, if we look back at the 9070 and 9070 XT launch, AMD said that they were gonna incentivize retailers to put the cards at MSRP and then that never happened. That was the official communication from AMD was that they were gonna work with retailers and nothing changed. So it's not quite clear exactly how this is all gonna play out. Are we actually gonna see 9060 XTs that are the same price as the 5060 Ti's because they're delivering the same gaming value? Is that potentially what's gonna happen here? I don't know. My hope is that the cards come in close to what AMD is saying. There hasn't been enough proof that that's gonna take place in the past. Obviously, we could say all of this about NVIDIA as well. The only difference with NVIDIA is that they do have the Founders Editions for the vast majority of their cards, and sometimes you can get the Founders Edition at the MSRP that is quoted. So there's like five cards as opposed to zero with AMD. Not that it makes it that much better, but it is a slightly different situation. I hope that uh, budget gamers can get these cards for $299. And also, to be quite honest, this bodes well for the 9060 non-XT that we've been seeing in certain uh, reports previously. If the XT is at $299, then hopefully the non-XT is getting closer to that $199 price point, and we might be back towards like $2015 dollar pricings when it comes to uh, mid-tier graphics cards. I can try to remain hopeful here, but you know what I don't have to remain hopeful for because it's just actually good? I don't, I don't have hope deferred at all. Today's video sponsor. Ruh-roh, <laughs> Raggy! Yeah, yeah, sorry. Sorry, Shaggy. Uh, we caught the uh, bird monster at the Carnegie Museum. Like, let's go, man! Great work, Scoob! Uh, yeah, it's like... It's just like right there. Can't fly, so we're ready to do the explanation we always do. You know, at the like the end of the episode. All right, dude. Let's get down to it. Like just as I thought, man. That's a Falcon Northwest Tiki PC, the smallest micro tower on the market. So you're telling me this monster with feathers isn't a bird monster, and it's a custom built. PC specifically for us? Like, man, I don't understand what you're not getting with this. We do these reveals every episode. They can also do custom artwork too. So you're telling me that bird is 
this small, it can fit a 5090. If by bird you mean this obvious PC, then yes. All right, Mr. Smarty Pants. If you know so much about Falcon Northwest, who's in charge? Like easy, man. <laughs> it's been the same guy from the start, but Falcon Northwest is way more than just one dude, man. All right. Fine, Shaggy. If you've already solved this, name all the case options. Come on, Scoob, you're throwing softies, man. Talon, mid tower, frag box, small form factor. Oh, and our pal, the Tiki over there. Whoa. All right, all right. You seem to know all the evidence, but does this explain the warranty and support options? Like it sure does, man. All Falcon Northwest PCs come with a three year warranty and one year of overnight service. Standard. All right, dude, I get it. You know your custom PC builder. Scoob, man. You're like majorly slacking, man. Falcon Northwest makes PCs for everyone, not just gamers. Content creation, business applications, they do it all. That's probably why they were named one of PC Mag's best products of 2024. That's enough chit chat, boys. Let's see who this really is. Old man Falcon. Falcon Northwest is awesome. We've been working with them for years, whether it's the charity streams, which they've provided PC giveaways for us with the custom SRF liveries, or it's just sponsoring hot news. It's been great to partner with them, especially with the amount of love that they have for the PC enthusiast community, the products that they make, and just their presence in the PC hardware community. It's been fantastic to have them. Big thanks to Falcon Northwest for sponsoring today's video. Well, Zoinkies Scoop, AMD announcing that they're working to make FSR better in some of the ways that NVIDIA makes DLSS good in terms of using machine learning and various different things. And that's with their FSR Redstone setup. So this is essentially being baked onto FSR 4, which is the latest one that only works on the RX 9000 series GPUs, but it's gonna have several different features that should make ray tracing better, should make some upscaling features better. With them saying that they have neural radiance caching, machine learning accelerated ray regeneration, and machine learning accelerated frame generation. So Potentially, we're gonna get things like multi-frame gen down the line for this, but ray regeneration sounds like NVIDIA's ray reconstruction that they use, which made a huge difference when it came to the feasibility of path tracing on their cards. But this should hopefully be launching sometime in the second half of this year. Whenever AMD gives like these nebulous deadlines of like next half of next year, they typically always slip. And likely, <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm being honest about how AMD has handled this in the past, I would expect that this is a 2026 launch. This is a CES thing rather than actually coming out this year, but hopefully it shows that they're actually developing the software side of things to keep up with NVIDIA on all of that side. But it wasn't just GPU things that AMD had to show off. They also had the Ryzen Threadripper Pro 9000 on display over at Computex. With these things being, according to them, the best workstation processors, it's not like Intel's been giving them that much competition in this. The 96 core, 192 thread, 5.4 gigahertz boost, 384 megabytes of L3 cache chips with 128 PCI Express Gen 5 lanes. These things, at least according to AMD's own benchmarks, are going to beat out their previous best as well as whatever Intel has in terms of their best performance. And they should be available sometime in July in case you need a workstation chip for your own setup. And I need a Reese for my own setup. I want this guy for me and you saving money. Yo, welcome back to UFD Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. Nice short and sweet episode for you today. Jumping in, we have the SteelSeries Octus Nova One Wired Gaming Headset, which you can grab for only $17.99, making it $37 off. And then next, we have the Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR4 RAM Kit, featuring 64 gigs running at 3200 megahertz at CL16, going for only $85.99 with the coupon applied, making it $44 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm going to hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, looks like Verizon got a great deal when it came to acquisition. And now that they have the deal secured, they want to try to get out of some of the terms, which would require them to unlock their phones. They're saying that that's a bad thing. So Verizon tried to merge with TrackPhone. And part of the agreements that they came to there was that they were going to unlock their phones within a specific period of time. And now Verizon has filed to have that amendment stripped from the merger acquisition because they don't want to do it because it would <coughs> uh, result in unintended consequences that harm consumers competition in Verizon while propping up international crime organizations that profit from fraud including device trafficking and subsidized devices from the United States. These bad actors target and harm American consumers and U.S. carriers like Verizon for their own profit by diverting unlocked traffic devices to consumers in foreign countries. So Verizon obviously not wanting to allow people to slip from their clutches from them being able to pay them and 
trying to get out of a deal that they agreed to because they actually didn't want to agree to it, but they wanted to get through most of the bureaucratic process before then trying to pull the rug out from everything that uh, would have made this deal at least slightly better for the consumer, which is also happening on the Apple side of things. You might remember that there's been a lot of upheaval in Apple in their payment store, where now they have to allow for off platform payment for things like subscriptions to various different services like Netflix or Spotify or, you know, Amazon, different things. And Spotify says that this has been great for them. Then coming out in a brief filing saying that this has led to a significant increase in people subscribing to Spotify premium on iOS, which is significant compared to Android, which has been flat. So the rules changing means that people are more likely to subscribe to Spotify premium over on Apple devices. And they're saying that this, despite Apple's pleas that this should end and this is bad for Apple and the ecosystem, Spotify saying, no, this is great for us. So one, bad monopoly to another, making the bad monopoly better for the, the music bad monopoly and not the, the, the device bad monopoly. But speaking of bad monopolies, okay, one of the reasons why Nvidia has a stranglehold on the GPU industry is not because they necessarily provide better gaming value, but because they have a little feature set known as CUDA, which allows for acceleration in professional platforms that make it so that their cards will outpace AMD by multi-factors because there's no support for using the hardware on AMD in an accelerated fashion. We're talking things like streaming or Blender or various other things. Now, AMD has had a program that has allowed for some acceleration known as Rockham, also known as Radeon Open Compute. The only problem with this is that it has been limited in support, both in terms of devices, it's typically only been relegated to things like their pro-level graphics cards, or it's been limited to only Linux, not given people support in the platforms that they're actually on. But with the announcements yesterday at Computex, AMD decided that they're going to be changing and moving forward and fixing all of that. So hopefully we could have serious competition when it comes to professional applications on Team Red making way so that we don't have this stranglehold from NVIDIA on the professional side of things. So the big thing with AMD's announcements with the Rockham platform yesterday was that number one, they're adding support for RX 9000 series GPUs and Ryzen AI Max. So both mobile platforms as well as discrete GPUs, the latest modern ones, which is great and all, but doesn't mean a whole lot if it's on a platform that people aren't using it on. Which then AMD came out and said that they are going to bring Rockham support to Windows. So that's huge in and of itself, but then they also announced that they're going to make sure that Rockham support has day one release for future hardware. So things like new GPUs dropping the next generation should hopefully have Rockham support on Windows to make it so that there's better acceleration going on in professional applications with the wide variety of devices that AMD provides. Because I can't tell you how many times that I've done hot news and we talked about things like the RTX 5070, right? That didn't make any sense if you look at the gaming performance versus the RX 9070 or 9070 XT. But people say, well, Brett, I need, I need an NVIDIA card for Blender. I need an NVIDIA card for this professional application that I use because AMD doesn't provide acceleration, so I'm gonna lose tons of performance in my professional applications, even if I'm gonna get 15 to 30% better gaming performance, that's undone by the professional side. Hopefully, now with AMD expanding Rockham, that will no longer be the case in the future. Obviously, this is gonna require support from various different programs out there, but it's laying the foundation for a future where there's more competition than just NVIDIA's CUDA acceleration in various different things. So this is a future that I personally wanna get excited for. I hope you are too. Let me know down below in the comments if you are while I review what you said in yesterday's episode of Hot News. We got Three Rack Noti calling me out on a mistruth that I spoke, a misremembering that I had saying that the butterfly keys were the problematic MacBook key style. Scissor keys were in MacBooks before that mess and they returned to using them in 2019. My mistake, I, uh, I conflated butterfly, scissor, together. I was wrong. Thank you for calling me out on that. And then RFYID saying, we got the new Nocto AIO before GTA 6. Um, I've seen several comments like that. And I just gotta be honest with you, Rockstar delayed GTA 6. Do you know who has a propensity for delaying their products because they wanna perfect them and they take the time to do it? Noctua. 
knocked away. The NHD 15G2 was supposed to be out years, <laughs> years ago. And it just got, it kept getting delayed because Noctua is one of those companies that values making sure the product is right and making sure their customers are taken care of more than hitting release dates. And they'll eat the crow on uh, having to say, sorry, we got to push it back versus releasing a product that they're not satisfied with in terms of quality. And so I respect that approach, but let's not count our chickens before they turn into roosters, okay? The, the, the Noctua IOs have not hit the market yet. And then Asterisk saying, Hey, Kyler, you're going to want to hear this one. So, Kyler, in yesterday's episode of Hot News, I talked about how Noctua is releasing all-in-one liquid coolers, right? You went to the Noctua booth. You got to see them, hey? Are you still making these videos? <sighs> yeah, that's what I'm doing. Uh, anyways, Ashra said, I'm so brain rotted that I thought he said Hoctua's into the Ligma cooler game. Lingma, gooly, 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 want a lingangu, lingangu. Hoctua's in the Ligma cooler game. Yeah, I thought it was. Noctua's in the liquid cooler game. I thought you would find that humorous. What's Hoctua? It's a cryptocurrency. I don't like this. Oh, okay. All right, well, the, la the last comment I was gonna read. Rudy saying, at a time where other channels routinely produce negative video after negative video, this channel continues to be a breath of fresh air for me. Also, I greatly appreciate that you remind viewers that you don't speak for everyone. I don't speak for everyone. No one speaks for everyone. We all have our own wants, needs, and situations. Well done. I speak for you and go touch some freaking grass, nerd. Stop watching YouTube videos, losers. <laughs> He's not like this off camera, which is the weird part. This, this is this is his on camera personality. Anyways, uh, yeah, I uh, I've been feeling that as well. I have been wanting, and I I fail many times at bringing positivity to the PC gaming environment. The the trick there is not uh not being recklessly positive, also acknowledging flaws, but also um, giving space for different perspectives and different realities and not recklessly just flipping off the world and saying that I hate everything, everything sucks and uh, only if you agree with me is is it good and I'm gonna change my mind later and tell you that the thing that we agreed on earlier is wrong and now I hate you too. Perspective is that thing I do when I go outside because it's hot. It is hot here, it's, here, it's very hot in Taiwan. You said something about flipping off earlier? Yeah. And uh, I, want to, I want to make the editors kind of yeah, Rick, right, because you got to censor that. <laughs> All right, well, I'm, I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> Come on, man! <laughs> Making Rick's work for his job. All right, see you back here for Hot News tomorrow. Hopefully.